Boys, it's great when the wee ones walk past, you know, and there's the odd one will wink up at me like that there, and <laughs> it really tickles me. Really wee gentlemen, and all the size of them, and they're winking up. Sure, it's great to see them, and it's great that they're able to do that. And I wink back, and there's nothing wrong with it. All right. Now, let's turn again. This, let's turn this morning to the Word of God, and we're turning to Matthew's Gospel, please. And we're turning to chapter 18, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. As the Lord drew my thoughts and attention to this portion this morning, I could see that the Lord wants to speak to us concerning a very common problem. It's a very common problem, a common problem that all too often has become a serious problem. So serious this morning that even the very devil has wreaked havoc because this problem wasn't dealt with properly. You know, that's why so many problems take place, because they don't be dealt with properly. Many have faced this problem. I have. Many will face this problem. I'm sure we all have, or we all will. But perhaps there's someone here this morning, and you face this problem. The longer I spent at this passage, God the Holy Ghost brought my mind, drew my mind, my thoughts, my heart, my soul to this portion like a magnet. And I believe it's God's message for someone here this morning. And remember, it's God's message, not my message. It's God's message. And as I read this portion this morning, down it was Tuesday when the Lord revealed it to me, I found myself asking this one question, and it's this one question this morning is the title that I'm placing upon God's message. What if I've been wronged? What if I, I have been wronged? And I have been wronged by a fellow believer. It's a common problem. But all too often, child of God, it has become a serious problem. Why? Because it hasn't been dealt with properly. Wonders well, are someone here this morning, and you have been wrong. And you've been wrong by a belief. You know, this morning, child of God, Believers shouldn't wrong one another, but they do. How do we deal with it? How do we face it? How do we get over it when a sister or a brother wrongs us. Matthew's Gospel this morning, chapter 18, the Lord Jesus answers the question. In Matthew's Gospel 18, verse 15, the Lord Jesus speaks. Moreover, the Lord Jesus says, If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go 
and tell him his fault. Between thee and him alone, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, shall ye shall loose. Sorry, what ye, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. And we know that the Lord will bless that reading of His own precious truth. What if I've been wrong, wronged by a fellow believer, what do we do? What course of action should we take? What is the best way forward? Eighty percent of the times we be wronged unintentionally. But always remember this, child of God, two wrongs don't make a right. And let's remember this, child of God, if you're hurting this morning because you have been wronged, and maybe there's someone here this morning and you've been carrying this hurt for years. It's not something that happened a lot of weeks ago. Maybe there's somebody here this morning and you've been hurting for years and the hurt of being wronged in the on time past is running through your Christian life like a poison. You remember this, child of God, the pathway back to happiness is never paved with hate. You remember that. And the road to reconciliation is never paved with revenge. No! What if I've been wrong? I want you to notice in that passage that we have read this morning, the Lord Jesus is not instructing the offender. The Lord Jesus, did you notice that this morning in your Scripture reading? The Lord Jesus is not instructing the offender. He's not instructing the person who caused the hurt. He's instructing the one who carries the hurt. He's not instructing the one who has inflicted the pain. He's instructing the one who is injured by the pain. Notice this morning, child of God, that he's the Lord Jesus, he's not instructing the offender. He's instructing the offended. And here's the first thing the Lord Jesus wants us to see. 
If you have been wronged this morning, here's the first thing the Lord Jesus wants you to see. There is the path that we must embrace. Look at you at verse, verse number 15. Now listen, this is the Lord Jesus. These are not my words, but this is the Lord Jesus. And listen, perhaps this morning for you, hurting, injured, offended, child of God, maybe this is God's message to you, which I believe it is. It's the beginning of the healing process for you. And we need to follow the Lord's instructions. Because in verse 15, we have the path we must we must embrace. Listen to verse 15. Moreover, the Lord Jesus says, if thy brother shall transgress against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee. Thou hast gained thy brother. That's the path we must embrace. Notice, child of God, what the Lord Jesus doesn't say to the offended. He doesn't say, go and badmouth that person. He doesn't say, go and speak evil of that person. He doesn't say, go and warn others of that person. No, 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 no. Because that is not the Christian thing to do. And that's not the Christless thing to do. And yet, no, Christians do it all the time. Bad-mouthing others and gossiping about others. There's nothing Christian about it, brother. And there's nothing Christ-like about it, either, sister, when you're babbling about other believers. And this morning in this passage of Holy Scripture, the Lord Jesus says, No, 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 if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and thee alone. Now, you remember this child of God, as I have to be reminded, listen, you and I this morning, we are channels. We are channels of love, and we are channels for truth, not channels for maliciousness, and not channels for lies either. And the Lord Jesus says, listen, here's the path you have to embrace this morning. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And that's the most difficult step to take, the first one. You know, child of God, this morning, too many people get eaten up and remain to be eaten up because they fail to take this first step. You'll, you'll, you'll encounter this. Oftentimes when people have taken this step, and when they have gone to the person and told the person the wrong that they have done, do you know what? Eight times out of ten this has happened. The offender didn't even know, and it was done unintentionally. And in fact, the offender became the offended because it offended them that they offended you. 
And child of God this morning, if you're going about this morning with this pain and you're carrying this hurt because of some wrong, listen, here's the path you must embrace this morning. It's the Lord's message to your heart. And listen, maybe that person's a family member. Or maybe that person belongs to this fellowship. I don't know, but listen, it's none of my business to know, but God knows, and you know this morning, who the offender is. And the Lord instructs you to do this, to take this path that you must embrace. Look at, first of all, the need of this path. Go and tell him his fault. I remember dropping into a house one time, oh, a number of years ago now, and dropped in for a bit of crack. And all of a sudden, this man's wife says to him, tell me this, are you not going to tell George about a problem that you have? And I didn't know what the problem was. When somebody says, are you going to tell somebody about the problem? At that time, you just don't want to know what's going on. And the person shared me with the problem, and it was against another, belo- another brother in the Lord. And with this brother, you could almost see the rage. He says, how do I get over this? How do I deal with this? He says, you deal with it the way the Lord Jesus tells us to deal with it. There is a path we must embrace, and that is, as I shared with this brother, go and show him. His fault. I couldn't do that, George. George, I, I couldn't do that. Well, he says it's either you suffer the hurt or you get over the hurt by following the Lord's guidance. He did. And the offender was so sorry for the way in which he thought he had offended him. And reconciliation took place. Listen, do you see, when you go to tell your brother or your sister their fault, you're not going to war with them. You should never get that into your mind. You're going with a purpose to win them, the path we must embrace. Look, secondly, because the Lord Jesus speaks of a problem that we may encounter. Did you notice verse 16? Look at verse 16. He says, but if he will not hear thee. That's the problem we may encounter. You see, this morning, there's brethren and their sisters this morning who suffer from a wee disease, and we all can suffer from this disease, and it's called spiritual pride. And it's a kind of a disease that causes us to rebuke those who challenge us. There's the problem we may encounter. Because you see, child of God, that person that you may go to, they might not just see it as an offense. In fact, they will see it as an offense because you have went to them. The great problem oftentimes is this. So many of God's people won't admit their fault. They're too proud to admit their fault. And what hurts more is this. Because they hurt you, and they won't admit their fault, and perhaps this is where you are this morning. You've gone to that brother. You've gone to that sister, but they won't admit. They won't hear. A person like this child of God shows to us how spiritual they really are.
I've often said if you wrong somebody in the wrong without any, any explanation, you watch their reaction, and that will indicate to you how spiritual they really are, no matter what kind of a spirit you'll show them a put on. And maybe there's someone in this meeting this morning, and God is putting the finger in your problem. You've went, but they won't listen. You've went, but they won't hear. And yet they break bread. Yet they pray in the prayer meeting. What if I am wrong? What do I do in this case? This is what the Lord Jesus wants you to know. If you have been wronged by someone, and you have done the first thing, you went to that person, you shared with them the hurt, the pain. Here's the first thing the Lord Jesus wants you to do. He wants you to still love them. And He wants you to still pray for them. And you're to still this morning bring them before the Lord. And if that person is less spiritual towards you, don't you become less spiritual towards them. Too many have. And they've ruined their own walk with God. Maybe more so than the offender. The problem we may encounter. But if thy brother, as it says there, will not hear thee, then there is the people we may engage. Notice the steps, first of all, Look at them carefully. There is the path we must embrace. Verse 15. There's the problem we may encounter. Verse 16. But in verse 16, we have the people we may engage. Look what it says. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Now, here's a very important lesson. You don't take with you your best friends. When you're looking out people for this incident, you look out for people who are spiritual, with integrity. Some of our friends mightn't even be spiritual. You look out for the person this morning who you know is spiritual and who can give wise counsel. There's people I can call upon, and it's wise to seek out, because there's a lot of people, friend, who would like to be your witnesses, and it's not for your good at all. It's just for nosiness sake they want to be involved. 
You want to seek out these people who are men or women of prayer, who will pray with you, who will sit with you, and who will listen to you as you tell them honestly what has taken place. It's important that you seek out the right people. People with integrity. People that are spiritual. People who are not busy bodies. Because the whole thing still has to be a private affair. And maybe this morning, child of God, this is the stage you're at this morning. I don't know. Listen, this is the Lord's message. If you've been wrong and you've tried time and time again, seek out two people who are spiritual. Men and women of prayer, men and women of integrity, men and women of honesty, but most of all, men and women of humility. Men and women who are wise in counsel. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And listen, child of God, the reason why you're bringing the two or three witnesses is this, it's not to prove the offender wrong. It's to prove you're right. You remember this child of God in a scenario such as this, we are called to win our offender. Too many Christians love to go to war with one another. And it's wrong! And churches have been split because problems like this weren't dealt with properly. What if I've been offended? What if I've been wrong? You watch God's message this morning. There is the path we must embrace. Remember, there's a problem we may encounter. You remember this. There's the people we may engage. Fourthly and finally, there's the power we may enforce. Look at verse number 17. And if he shall neglect to hear thee, or hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Remember this child of God. Everything must do be done in love, and everything must be done in humility. Do you remember what Paul said to the Galatians 4 and 1? Brethren, if any man or a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, there you have it, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. But at this stage, if they won't repent and they won't up, up to the wrong, what do we do? There's a power we must enforce. Do you know one of the greatest ministries, the most difficult ministries that is neglected today within fellowships, it's the ministry of church discipline. But here's what I have against church di discipline. 
Too many boys make church discipline into almost a Nazism nature. The delight in it. Church discipline must be done with love, with prayer, and with humility. It's taught in the Scriptures that church discipline must take place. And the problem is, the problem is, we fail to continue to love. Child of God this morning, listen. The Lord Jesus doesn't instruct the offender. Look at it, read at it. It instructs the offender. And if you have been offended and you have followed these instructions, I'll tell you what you do. And it's the Lord through these lips of clay is telling you what to do. You look at the Lord Jesus. You see those nails in his hands and in his feet. You see the spittle running down his face. You see his visage marred more than any other man. You see the very hairs plucked from his beard. Did the Lord Jesus hate those men who done it? No, he didn't. He prayed, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And this morning, child of God, if you've been wrong, continue you to live for Christ in spite of the way the offender behaves or chooses to react. You live for Christ. What if I've been wrong? This is the way. Walk ye in it. Let's seek. Let's seek this morning to win our offenders and to love them and to pray for them. Never to dislike them or never, ever to hate them. Love them. And may God, by his grace and his counsel, seek us to do that this morning, for his name's sake.